Hey guys, it's Creaky Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And Sweden is finally on the battlefield. I'm going to be giving you a full preview of the first ever Swedish tank, the Stridsvang M4257, which is going to be the first ever premium auto loading medium in World of Tanks. Let's get started. So, seeing how this is the first Swedish tank in the game, there are a lot of novel features to check out. Firstly, the premium consumable for Sweden is coffee with cinnamon buns. You know what? I think it would have been far better to have meatballs while gaming. What are you doing? And also, as we can see here, there are a lot of unique Swedish faces that you'll be able to have if you're so inclined and the look of your crew does matter to you. And I presume that there are a lot of unique names as well. And so if you want to call yourself Johan Johannesson and have yourself a pretty cool mustache, then yeah, you can do that. So the Stritzvang M4257 will also allow us to take a look at all the camouflages that will be coming up for the Swedish line. Here we can see one with patterns on it and the all white for the, I guess, the winter camo. Then there are two options available for the summer camo. Here's option one and here is option two. And finally, the Swedes have got another two desert camos looking like this. So if you're so inclined, you can put some camouflage on your new Swedish tank as well. There are also unique inscriptions only available for Swedish tanks. And so if you want to demonstrate your national pride and have Hurrias Furria on the side of your tank, then this might be the vehicle to do so. But for many of you, novel features like this will not matter. And all that you really care about is, is this vehicle going to be kick-ass on the battlefield? So let's use Wargaming's new tank compare, which will be in the garage in 9.16 to take a look. I'm going to to be comparing the M4257 to the tier 6 British premium medium tank, the Cromwell Berlin, the tier 6 Czechoslovakian medium tank, the Škoda T40, and remember this was the first ever Czechoslovakian tank in the game, as well as also a vehicle that compares quite well to the Stritzvang, the AC4 Experimental, and also the standard Czechoslovakian tier 6 medium tank, the Škoda T25, which also matches up quite well to the M4257 because it has a similar autoloader at tier 6 medium tank. So immediately we notice that the M4257 75mm autoloader actually has very nice alpha damage for a tier 6 medium tank. It has the same 150 alpha damage as the AC4 Experimental, and when we compare it to the 110 alpha damage, that the T25 has, it just pales in comparison. You're going to be doing 40 damage extra every shot than the tier 6 Czechoslovakian medium tank autoloader. And the 75mm on the M4257 with its 150 alpha damage is 15 better than on the Cromwell Berlin. But of course it can't compare to the 220 alpha damage that you'll be picking up on the Škoda T40. The M4257's turret traverse speed is the same as the Škoda T40 at just over 33 degrees a second. This is much worse than the AC4 Experimental, slightly worse than the Czechoslovakian T25, and the Cromwell Berlin, well that's one of its specialities, that very rapid turning turret. So unfortunately the M4257's gun depression is the same as the Czechoslovakian Škoda T40 at 6 degrees. That is rather mediocre, but is understandable considering the vehicle does have an autoloader. Well, not if we compare it to the Škoda T25, which gets 10 degrees of gun depression, the same as the Sentinel, and the Cromwell Berlin is sitting in the middle of this comparison at 8 degrees. What this means is the M4257 isn't going to be the ridgeline warrior that a lot of people were hoping it was going to be, and the 6 degrees does feel rather awkward. But I guess it's too early to tell if this is going to be an indication of what we're going to be seeing when the full Swedish branches are released. Aim time-wise, the Stritzvang M4257 is rather nice at 2.3 seconds, the same as the Cromwell Berlin, the same as the Škoda T40, but can't quite compete with the 2.1 seconds that the AC4 and the Škoda T25 have. And this aim time is very important because the number of shells in the M4257's magazine is four, making this tank able to do 600 damage within six seconds of the first shot. That is so much better than the Škoda T25, which only has three rounds in the magazine, and remember the alpha damage is 110, meaning it takes 2.66 seconds for the Škoda T25 to deal 330 alpha damage from the first shot. This 600 average damage magazine on the M4257 will be enough to take out entire tier 5 tanks, or slightly wounded tier 6, 7 or 8 vehicles. And so that means that this vehicle is certainly one that you don't want to leave alone, especially if it has the side or the rear of your tank, and it's probably going to have to do so because it's got 148mm of standard penetration and 190mm of penetration with its APCR rounds. Now 148 is decent, especially when we consider that the Cromwell Berlin has 145, but its premium rounds do fall slightly short of the 202 that the Cromwell Berlin have. 
And you know, 190 is not quite enough to really contest the front of many tier 7 and tier 8 heavy tanks, and so don't think you're going to be able to compensate by dabbing your 2 key to be able to take on higher tiered heavies frontally. One thing that is nice about the M4257, however, is the accuracy. Here we can see it is 0.35, which is slightly better than the Cromwell Berlin's 0.36, and way better than that of the AC4 Experimental, which has an awful 0.39 accuracy. One area where the M4257 does fall down, however, is the reload time. It takes 16 seconds to reload the magazine fully, and that is a rather long time when we look at the Skoda T25, which only takes 8 seconds to fully load a magazine. And remember that the magazine on the Skoda will be doing 330 average damage, while the Stritzfang is going to be doing 600 average damage but you're going to be able to fire off at least two magazines in the Skoda for every magazine that the Stritzfang could. And so this unfortunately means that the brand new Swedish tank has got pretty damn awful average damage per minute, 1,662. The Cromwell Berlin has got 25% more than that, and even the Skoda T25 has got 10% more than that. This means that the M4257 is not going to be racking up a lot of damage very quickly. It needs slower, more long-winded battles where it can make use of that 600 average damage magazine. So how about the survivability of the brand new Swedish vehicle? Well, it's got the joint lowest hit points with 700, the same as the Skoda T50. But that's not that much less than the Cromwell Berlin and the Sentinel, which have got 750. Now when it comes down to the armor of the M4257, it is the thinnest in this comparison, at least with regards to the turret armor, with 40 at the front, 20 at the side, and 20 at the rear. With the hull being 55 at the front, 30 at the side, and 20 at the rear. That means that this tank is not going to be able to take a hit reliably. But one thing that I should mention is that is it better to have thinner armor that is well angled or slightly thicker, flatter armor like on the Cromwell Berlin? Well, of course, it's going to be far better to have the more well angled armor, especially considering that the Cromwell Berlin has only got 76 millimeters of frontal turret armor and it is such an easy tank to pen because it is flat and boxy. The M4257, on the other hand, we can see that the top of the turret is quite well angled, a lot like a French autoloader design. And it's also the same on the upper part of the hull, which means that this vehicle does actually pull off some surprising ricochets due to going over 70 degrees of angling. But really, you should be counting yourself lucky if you ricochet anything in this tank, and you're gonna have to make the most of those 700 hit points to try and allow you to fire off those magazines. So unfortunately, you're gonna be disappointed when you hear about the mobility of this tank. Its specific power ratio is 13.28, and I didn't really feel that its ground resistances were that amazing. The vehicle also has a limited top speed limit of 45 kilometers an hour, which is way slower than all of the other tier six medium tanks in this comparison but thankfully it can go backwards quickly at 20 kilometers an hour. So when you've got up, you fired off your magazine, then you should be able to pull back into cover quickly, which is a nice feature. Thankfully, however, the traverse speed of the tank is not that bad at just under 40 degrees a second, which of course is worse than the Cromwell Berlin, but it is better than the Skoda T25, which does feel like an absolute little box for tank trying to get round. Camo rating wise, the vehicle is second best in this comparison, pretty much on par with the Cromwell Berlin and significantly better better than that of the Skoda T25. But unfortunately, the final feature of this tank is yet again a disappointment. Look at the view range, 350 meters. That is very awkward indeed, and even if you do everything that you can to be able to maximize your view range with your commander using situational awareness and recon, having brothers in arms, using coated optics, and even the brand new consumable coffee with cinnamon buns, we can only get up to 438 meters view range. Well, I guess there's a little bit left for recon, but my point is that even if you max out this tank with regards to view range, you're not going to be going over about 445. But you know what? I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. So here we go. Not the best possible matchmaking on the test server, but hardly anyone are playing tier four to tier six tanks. And so I was having to definitely learn how to play the supporting role. And you know what, I think that's really what you're gonna have to do in the M4257. It doesn't really have the DPM to go crazy and try and kill multiple opponents. It doesn't have the armor to be able to, to ricochet really any vehicles at all. It doesn't have crazy gun depression to be able to utilize some positions to catch its opponents unknowingly. However, you know, when you've got this magazine, the, the 75mm, which is capable of doing 600 damage within 6 seconds of the first shot, it is rather nice. You definitely have to give some lead though. There you go, micro adjustment there in the lead. We hit the chaffy, take his tracks off twice, and that one pretty much went in as well. 
So, not bad start, and you can get an idea of just how brutal that 150 alpha damage is with an autoloader. It does feel rather nice at tier 6, and I think that's really the, the main thing, if not the only thing, that this tank has going for it. So now we're going to be putting some rounds into the side of the FV-201, and he's just, I think he's just figured out that we have an autoloader, right? So we did, gosh, about 450, maybe just more than that to him. But we also took his tracks off, I believe, twice, which means we're also getting a lot of assistance damage for our, well, from our allies dealing with him. So you know what? Not a bad result so far. Put a round into one of their tier 5 light tanks, then started to take out that tier 7 premium heavy, shut down a tier 7 light tank. And you know what? You might be thinking now that the DPM on this tank doesn't look too bad, right? But remember, we are only doing 150 alpha damage with every shot. But then again, can I really say only? I don't, I don't think I can say only. 150 alpha damage is very nice for a tier 6 tank. There are even some tier 7 mediums that I like to play, such as the Comet, which only has 145 alpha damage, I believe. I think it's got 145 alpha damage. I might be mistaken. I might not even know what the alpha damage is on one of my, one of my most played tanks. But yeah, 150 with this magazine, it does feel significant. But you've, you've got to be thinking, uh, will this 600 be enough to be able to take out an enemy's Thritzfang, for example? Well, no, it's not going to be doing the 700 very often unless you get exceedingly lucky with your rolls. And so what I'm doing right now is realizing I can't pen the IS-6 with my standard rounds. So I decided to fire at his tracks to lock him down for my allies. I'll be getting some assistance damage. And now I can now I reload an APCR magazine and I should be able to contest the side now if I don't shoot the wall. Good modeling there on Runeberg. Put one into him. Trying to take off his tracks again. Can we pen his lower plate? No, we can't. You know, you need you need a hell of a lot of penetration to be able to go through the IS-6 unless you can manage to get his side clean. And the Stritzfang, even with its premium rounds, 190 penetration, isn't going to be able to do that. So now we're going to do the same to this Super Pershing. I could be going through the top of his tank here, definitely, with these APC. Oh, where did that one go? That one just looped right under his tank. Finally taken off his tracks, and now we're going to shoot the top of his vehicle. And remember, this is something that you really should be doing, especially if you're in your tier 6 medium tanks and you're engaging your, your tier 8 opponents. Assistance damage is key. Sure, it's not going to increase your W and 8, but if you want to make a lot of experience, you want to get some marks of excellence, and you also want to get some credits from the battle, then tracking your opponents is a very good solution. Everybody is just pushing me out the way here. How rude. But you know, the Stritzfang, not the heaviest of vehicles, not the most powerful engine, and so we do get bullied out the way. But all in all, a strong game on Runeberg here. We made the front, we punished the light tanks, we prevented the enemy team from getting vision, then we took it to town against a heavy on the enemy team as well, and then we just tried to basically farm up some assistance damage, some credits and some crew training by detracking heavies that we otherwise would probably fail to penetrate. Talking about crew training, however, one thing that I didn't mention in the garage is that this vehicle only has three crew members. And remember, one of the th reasons why you're probably going to be buying this tank is so that you can get your Swedish crew ready for when the full tech tree is released. And so I guess that's a little bit disappointing because you're only going to be training up three crew members at the same time, and I don't know how many crew members the new Swedish tanks are going to be needing. Remember, for the first ever Czechoslovakian tank in the game, the Škoda T40, that has five crew members, which was more than enough to be able to cover every single one of the Czechoslovakian tanks up the line. And I guess we're going to have to just wait and see if that's going to be the same deal with the M4257. So actually, surprisingly, in this sub four minute game, we managed to get a lot of experience 4110 to be exact and that I believe was for my double that was 1191 base experience points and we also picked up a confederate medal because I guess we were dealing some damage to a little bit of everything so 669 assistance damage against the super pershing 457 against the is6 and also 412 against the FV201, showing you just how important it is to be detracking your opponents, especially when they're one to two tiers higher than you and have pretty much double your hit points. So this round we received 55,000 credits for the 1,636 damage that we dealt and the 1,500 assistance damage, meaning that this tank doesn't really make a huge amount of credits. Oh, but this is a bug. What replay seems to be, have bugged out here? So we take our 55,000 roughly minus the 1,200 for repairs, minus the, the 24,000 that we spent on ammunition and minus the 20,000 that we spent for that very expensive but tasty 
coffee with cinnamon buns, and we actually made about 10,000 credits profit here. But of course, hopefully when you're not having to fire premium rounds at tier 8 vehicles and you're not resupplying the coffee and the cinnamon buns at 20,000, hopefully you'll buy them on discount at 10,000, then it's not going to be so bad, and that round would have probably got us about 30,000 credits profit, albeit with a premium count. And so that's definitely something to watch out for. I wouldn't really pick this tank up thinking that it is going to be a great credit maker. It's going to just be a crew trainer, albeit with only three crew members. And so the M4257, what's my overall opinion of it? Well, it's really nice that it's the first premium medium autoloader in the game. And it also does feel rather rewarding when you're putting in 600 average damage magazines at such a low tier. But I also really think there are just too many things that currently let this tank down. And to be able to get that autoloader, it's had to make a lot of sacrifices. Namely, the mobility of this tank being not exactly terrible, but still rather poor. Poor. The six degrees of gun depression makes it feel awkward. The lack of armor and the lack of health means that this vehicle isn't going to be very resilient. And while its gun handling and accuracy is rather nice, it's not incredible that kind of makes up for all of the other features. Or shall I say, lack of them. But I think Wargaming are doing the right thing by not making this tank overpowered because obviously there's going to be a lot of them purchased at tier 6 just because it's the first ever Swedish tank, right? Especially on the European server. And so if this tank was crazy good, a bit like what we're seeing with the right Metal Scorpion at the moment, then it would probably dominate the matchmaking and make it a more horrible place, especially for those tier 4 players that really kind of need some help getting into the game. But when we look back at the first ever Czechoslovakian tank, the Škoda T40, sure, it had some fun features. The fact that there were the crew voices in the game, something that I didn't really mention this time because obviously I featured this tank already on the channel once when it didn't have the autoloader. But I think the M4257 is at about the same level that the Škoda T40 was when it went into the game. Not fantastic, but in no means bad. And it probably has enough novel features that a lot of people are going to want to pick up one of these tanks. And so Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like. It really helps the channel out. And also today is my birthday, so I'm going to be celebrating by doing some Q&A on the stream today along with Peppity. So if there's anything that you have ever wanted to know, then why not come along and try and find out. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the Stritzvang M4257. Do you think it looks absolutely awesome or do you think that it looks very mediocre and are you planning to pick one up when it is released in patch 916? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.